You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by NewTek, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, welcome back to our continuing coverage here at CES 2014 in Las Vegas. I am John P. I'm Simon Sage. Welcome. And we have a very special guest. We've got Dan from Vuzix. Did I, pro did I pronounce it correctly? Vuzix? Yes. Vuzix, okay. I was waiting for you to do my last name. <laughs> oh, well, C-U-I, let's see. Sui? Qui. 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 Much easier than poses easy. <laughs> Dan's easier. We could just call you Dan C. Yeah, wait, you can you do know, that too. John P, Dan C, you know, yeah, I'm whatever, big into whatever abbreviation. Works. Whatever works. Okay, so I first heard about your product on a press release, and yeah. I looked at it, I was like, uh, you know, obviously the first thing that came to mind, Google Glass, as yeah, a sure. competitive kind of, of product. You have a video glasses thing going on here. Okay. Tell us all about it. Well, I, most people don't realize that a lot of us have been in this industry for a long time. I, We've been out there since 1997 I, 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 doing I this say, technology. Yeah. I mean, from the military to consumers in the early 2000s. So does it piss you off whenever you, people are like, oh, Google Glass, Google Glass, and you're like, hello? No, 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 because we just <laughs> sit back and we laugh because we're the only guys that have a commercially available product. That's true, <laughs> that is true. So when they, when they say that, we go, well, you can buy it off our website. Right. Oh. Or, or, or you can uh, like us on Facebook and you get one free, maybe. There you go, so try you and go. win one, nice. There you go. But I mean, surely Google Glass has, has given you guys a little bit more popularity. You know, people are looking for alternatives, what, what, what they can get now, what's a little bit cheaper maybe. Uh, you guys have been doing this for a, for a long time. What have you learned from, from this kind of form factor? Yeah, so you know, people say we're competitive to Google Glass and we just sit there and go, yeah, okay, well, Google's really focused on the consumer side. Uh, but we have the experience to know that, uh, that a lot of the industrial and the medical and other B2B and pro server companies have been doing, looking at augmented reality and this type of device for a long time. So we have specifically focused on those areas and given them a product that now works in the environment that they've been building up to. It's companies that I spoke to five years ago that were talking about putting it in warehousing and medical areas, now have a product that they can use in those sectors that are built specifically for them. Well, tell us about how would you, how do you sure. see people implementing these products? Sure, so one of the things is, you know, Google Glass, you have to connect to, to the internet yep. all the time. We've built ours to be very flexible that allows users to tailor it to the way they need to work instead of trying to change their processes to the way that this device works. So for instance, um, one of the things that we know is that see-through, like Google Glass, has problems in certain areas. Imagine being a doctor and you're looking down and all of a sudden pieces of data that you need, patient data that you need to see, is all of a sudden obscured by ambient lighting. So we've created a digital see-through box. And what this means is that what you see here on the, sc the screen, and I'll actually, um, I'll put it up here for you um, for a second. Uh, well, if I was going to put it, hold on. Let me just reboot it. Now it runs on well, Android, right? Yeah, is it, it an Android on, OS? Pardon? Is it an Android OS? This is an standard Android OS, so oh. it runs thousands and thousands of, the, of apps that are already out there. Wow. But we have lots of software partners who have built specific apps for warehousing, medical. Um, Mateo is one of them, for instance, and Wikitude is another one. You know, those companies have uh, hundred, uh, tens of thousands of developers out there writing apps for augmented reality. So let's say that you're, you know, you're in a warehouse, for instance. And now you're the guy that's got to go around and try to find whatever that... Pick something. Pick something. Yeah, there was well, an this, order and we got to pick it. By wearing this, it can come up and it'll tell you, oh, you need to go to aisle 13, or you're going the wrong direction, or there's a lot of uh, smart forklifts that are starting to come around. The forklift is coming around the corner telling you, eh, beware, really? I might run you over. Wow. You know, those sort of things. Or maybe you're a, a doctor, and most people don't know that doctors, surgeons, and nurses need to communicate before patients go into surgery. So now you're wearing this, and you're the doctor, and you're calling the nursing team. You get a picture of the nurse, you know, live video that's up there, saying, hey, what do you want, doctor? And you say, yeah. well, did you, did you take out the dentures on the patient before they go into surgery? Yes, checklist, it's done, right? So you're able to communicate more effectively and efficiently. And for, for the industry, we've actually packed this out differently 
than what you might expect for you know like a consumer product. So as you can see here, um, we actually provide safety glasses, very high-end safety glasses that come with a clip, can mount left eye or right eye. It comes with a headband in case you want to run a headband. And though the product works up to eight hours on its own internal battery, because when you start doing heavy duty um, augmented reality, it might come down to two hours, we give you a 3,800 milliamp hour battery externally if you want to use it. So you could stick it in a pocket or you know, strap it to you somewhere That's right. and keep it going. How big is the battery that comes in it normally? And the, the battery, um, uh, milliamp hours, now you're going to make me remember. I'm here. just going to guess. It's around 650 milliamp hour battery. Oh, wow. So that's like yeah, way it's, it's bigger. A lot bigger. That'll than definitely last all day. And then it operates differently than what you would expect from Google Glass. So it has three modes of operation it can run everything locally. It can run as a, as a, a non-intelligent device, meaning it's a heads-up display, so it's receiving information from your smartphone or tablet or other device, a computer system. Right. Or it can run in a full compatibility mode where it's handshaking with another server, like if you're in a warehouse, you need to communicate with the corporate servers about part numbers and things, or another smart device. And during all that time, it's an option for the user if he wants to connect to the internet. So if I was, let's say I was a, a surgeon, and I was going to do a surgery, and I wanted to film it at the same time. Could we use it for that? Absolutely. But, but I don't want it to be connected. I just want to film it and save it locally. Yes. Like we save it into a micro SD a card, micro SD 30, card. Uh, 32 gigabytes. 1080p. How is it? It's a 1080p um, display on here. Yep. Um, it's a, a widescreen QVGA display here. But most people will tell us, and and I'm sorry, it's. Uh, not this, turning on. This is live TV, is so live, it always so, happens. That's but, what always happens. But I will show you. So it. Um, that seems to be like, for example, that would be really great, not just from a documentary, not documentation standpoint, but from a training kind of standpoint. I mean, if if I was going to do something and I needed to record it to show other people, whether it was real time or pre-recorded, this is what it actually looks like looking at the video in the screen. So here you can say, I'm the person pushing the gurney into the hospital room. Yep. Now I'm communicating with a doctor. And then I'm actually going to ask for uh, patient data. And you can actually read the patient data that's up there, the yeah, heart monitors heartbeat, and everything else. Stuff. So you can see the eye box is very clear, crisp. You can read everything that's going on. Very cool. But this technology is just the first of what we're doing. Oh. So next year, you'll actually see us introduce, and you may have read some of the press releases where we created waveguide technology, which basically, um, instead of using a mi LCD micro displays and these plastic prisms in here, we actually have devices that send light through gla for glass, you know, like your, your lenses. So here's a pair of glasses. This is a binocular that we will actually have out available next year, or the, at the middle of this year, end of this year, where data is being displayed to both eyes. Oh my God, that's awesome. Nice. Now, can you get those with prescription lenses? Yes, you'll be able to. Oh, wow. And to give you an idea of what that actually looks like when, you, when you're looking through them, because I, I have that as well. Um, let me just, sorry, let me just go to. Uh, While you're doing that, we've got some questions. Um, does it have voice control? Yes, it operates four different modes of operation. It has push buttons, it has gesture control, it has voice control, Nuance is our partner there, uh -huh. and it also has remote control from another smart device. And one other question while you're doing that is, people are asking about like pricing and availability kind of situation. It's available now for sale off our website, and it's $1,000. Okay. And this is a, to give you an idea of what the waveguide <laughs> looks like. This is a picture looking through the waveguide, and this was actually a video running of a baseball player, but we put the baseball player on the table. That is awesome. Wow. So I, I could see a, a lot of uh, consumer-grade applications for the, the, the second pair of, uh, of glasses there. It, it seemed, they seem nice and slick. Yeah, you know. You know, consumers still need to find the killer app. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the time right now, when people walk up to me and say, I'm a consumer, I want to buy it, I go, well, what app are you going to run with it? And they go, uh, you're right, I don't know. Maybe video? <laughs> Maybe you know? I don't really need it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you, you know. Well, what about like recording? I mean, for recording stuff, I mean, is it, would it be easy to use that if, let's say, you're an action sports kind of guy sure. or something? Could you just put them on and use it for recording purposes and Absolutely. things like that? Absolutely. It'll run, it, you, can, um, you can run it and record it here. You can stream it live. 
You can broadcast it through one of our partners, Artsoft, who uh, their product runs on here. So you have a, a wide variety of options to, okay. to use it with. Because I know a lot of people that are buying Google Glass, and the only thing they really use it for, to be honest, is, is like is taking video. a picture or right. doing a video. They yeah. do like video interviews or they take pictures. That uh, seems to be the only thing I see anybody using. Yeah, for. video and the social networking thing is the, probably the biggest killer mm -hmm. app for a consumer side. Right now, at least. Right now. Yeah. But it would be cool, for example, with your glasses to wrap around. What I'd love to have is I'd love to have one that I could have uh, facial recognition and overlaying of names so that when well, I see you, you next time. Booth, <laughs> if you come to our booth, um, NTT Docomo actually announced that. Um, and they're the largest telecommunication company yeah. in Japan. So with the app they wrote, they can actually, for security purposes, they can recognize your face and get information for the securities team on, on nice. who you are and whether or not you're authorized to be in a particular area or not. Creepy. That's wow. very cool. All right. Um, wow, that's... <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, definitely. it's just like that movie with Tom Cruise where he's walking by and they scan the eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it called? Uh, yeah, Minority yeah. Report. Minority Report. Minority Report, yeah. <laughs> only, we, <laughs> only instead of it being in the hands of everybody else, you could actually <laughs> own right. this technology. You could, you could walk around. We can all share it together. You, you yeah. can be the private detective. It's <laughs> less <laughs> creepy when everybody has equal technology. When, when the technology is sure. unequal, then it's creepy. That's you know right. what I mean? That's cool. Right. Well, yeah. thanks for coming to join us and oh, showing welcome. off the Vuzix. That looks awesome. I'd like to try a pair. Well, come down to the booth, or if you want me to come back later, I'll bring some you can try great. on. Sounds <laughs> great. Sounds great. Hey, All right, guys. Okay, guys, stick around. We've got a lot more coverage coming, and uh, you can see it all if you head on over to geekbeat.tv. Uh, and or any of the any of our sites, geekbeat.tv, crackberry.com, I'm or Android, Android Central. Central, WP Central. Just put a forward slash CES at the end of it. You can see all of the stuff. If you miss any of the live coverage, it's all coming out uh, pre-recorded. So we'll be right back with more. We're going to take a quick break for those of you who are live, and we'll see you with more coverage in a few minutes.